In late October, we heard reports coming out of Japan that Toyota would be scrapping its electric vehicle plan. The BZ4X and potentially upcoming models just weren't efficient enough, too costly, and not flexible enough to keep up with the likes of Tesla and other EV automakers. And while we're still waiting to hear back from Toyota on what they plan on doing, leave it to Aishin, one of their largest suppliers, to give us the details of where Toyota is headed. <laughs> Over on Japanese website, CarWatch, they have announced Aishin's sustainability briefing for 2022. They posted this massive document and they have a lot more updates on where they're headed with their electric vehicle motors and the rollout of these motors. And they pretty much exclusively give these motors to Toyota through their Blue Nexus group tied up with another huge supplier, Denso. So let's get into these slides brought to you essentially by Google Translate since they're all in Japanese. Now by 2025 is when Aishin is expecting mass production of EVs. And that is going to be, of course, for Toyota and probably to a lesser extent, uh, Subaru, who's going to benefit massively from this as well. But they're estimating electricity consumption will go down by 15% thanks to these new, new technologies. So they'll have a new generation of e-axles. They have better aerodynamics. They're gonna have an improved cooling module, better thermal, uh, thermal management. And they're gonna have, I mean, they have a ton of slides on this area alone, the regenerative uh, cooperative braking, as well as the electronic parking brake. We're currently on the first gen e-axle, but Toyota, Denso, Aishin, they are not happy with the essentially the outputs of these e-axles and they're looking to completely replace them by uh 2025 where they when they plan to mass produce electric vehicles as well so let's read about the second gen and we'll talk about the third gen because they have a team of a couple hundred people already testing the third gen as well so compared to competitors their new uh, medium e-axle and this is probably going to be on the front end of the uh, vehicle has 30 percent loss reduction compared to competitors and in combination with aerodynamic devices power consumption is improved by about 15 percent so you can either have the same battery pack have 15 percent better range or you can have a 50 percent smaller battery pack which will reduce the cost while still getting the same range of what we currently have on the market compared to the first generation e-axle which is this guy they're taking big steps with the second gen and here some competitors e-axles where they claim to be outperforming now we move to the small e-axle here and we don't see any small e-axles i don't believe at this point in time because there's no litmus test here that they're comparing to but they are comparing to other competitors here where they're proving that it has way smaller um, dimensions, about a 40% reduction in volume against the competition, which is going to allow for more batteries or more cargo capacity. They're saying this small size is more of a mix between the second and third generation e-axle. This was pretty exciting. We have an image of an electric Tundra here. They're saying this new a high output motor, which we haven't seen in any uh, Toyota or Lexus vehicle yet. It says it has doubled the power performance compared to competitors in the same output range and it has enhanced motor cooling technology. So maybe we get our hopes up for 2025 where we could see a, a fully electric Tundra. I don't think it's out of the realm at this point in time. Now here is the third generation e-axle, which this is going to be a game changer for Toyota. They are going to launch this in 2027. So what's, what's interesting is that we'll have second generation uh, launching two years before this third generation. So I would assume that they live side by side with this third generation um, being in performance or let's say luxury vehicles in the Lexus lineup, for example. They are claiming overwhelmingly high efficiency and small size achieved by revamping the motor and gear train. And these third generation e-axles achieve half the volume of the first generation. And here's the, you know, here's a little graph here. It doesn't really mean a whole lot, but they're just saying volume is reducing, output is going up. So, you know, the, this arrow is good. The farther to the right in this area, the better. And they're saying this third generation e-axle is going to be fantastic. 
Now, this graph is a little misleading because they don't say where the line is going to be here with the volume and output. They just have like one motor here. And the output, in theory, is actually behind the first and second generation. But I think this is just going to be the first model here or the first module. And then it will go up at this rate or, or an incline to the right, like you see with the first generation. I think this is just the starting point and going to go up that way. Hopefully it made sense there. The third gen E-axle looks like a turbine engine or something you'd see on the back of a fighter jet. And what will this bring? Well, you can just see how much space is going to save in these uh, EVs coming out in 2027. You can have a smaller car now as a result. You don't have to have all this extra space to fit in these large modules. Uh, so you can have a very aerodynamic sedan, uh, which is also going to allow you to have a more battery capacity as well better aerodynamics so yeah it's not going to be probably until 25 2027 till we see like toyota evs being very competitive with some of the best out there on the market and so what's interesting is like yeah this these technologies aren't coming out till 2025 to 2027 the competition isn't standing still either so it's going to be a lot of fun for me to cover on the channel to see how how good these technologies are when they come out right now they sound amazing but are they going to be amazing when they come out in 2025 to 2027 it's yet to be seen okay so here's a cool timeline so i talked about how the second gen of e-axles and third gen e-axles will live on together and you can even say toyota is saying maybe the first generation here goes on as well for a while after that here we are in 2022 bz4x is out uh, they're going to have a new medium motor here for compact cars probably in 2024 2025 that's on the first generation surprisingly but you're also going to have small medium and large motors for the second generation in 2025 and then you're going to have supposedly the game-changing generation coming out in 2027 with their overwhelmingly high efficiency and miniaturization of those third-gen motors. It seems like they're already converting some assembly lines from uh, their previous transmission, automatic transmission assembly lines to e-axle assembly lines. They talk about their investment for e-axles from 2022 to 2025. It looks like it's going up probably five, six times. And then looking at the investment here, I also thought was pretty interesting. Uh, Japan, 50% of the investment is going to Japan for e-axles, 25% in North America, and then 15% in China. So uh, they might be relying pretty heavily on, uh, let's say, BYD for their e-axles because we look at the BZ3 that already is using BYD e-axles uh, and then other other markets 10% but look at North America here guys 25% getting that big investment we'll still be getting a ton of these e-axles and vehicles coming from Japan but we will also be getting a lot of battery electric vehicles starting production here in North America in 2025 I'm guessing with battery plant opening up in a 2025 in North Carolina as well as the recent rumors of Panasonic and Toyota looking for another site on the East Coast for another battery plant. Uh, going to the electric unit volume production, of course, this is ramping up. They continue to believe that hybrids and plug-in hybrids are going to be a big part of the market, but it looks like they're saying by 2026, 2027, the hybrid and plug-in hybrid vehicles, they might be done growing while the e-axle production scene, not only in uh, battery electric vehicles, but also in fuel cells, as well as the newest generation of hybrids. If you look at the RX 500H or the new uh, Hybrid Max from the Crown, they have an e-axle in the back. So e-axles are not just going to be for electric vehicles. Aishin's not saying that we're going to have 5 million EVs produced by 2030 by Toyota. I think it's still going to be somewhere around the three to three and a half million from Toyota for for the for battery electric vehicles. Aishin motor production will quadruple by 2025 compared to 2021. And what's interesting here is we see cost reduction by utilizing new materials and new manufacturing methods in 2025, as well as rapid charging. So does that mean we're going to have solid state batteries then? Not quite sure, but they're expecting rapid charging to take over in 2025. So that's pretty exciting. And that's really going to springboard the electrification movement, at least on the Toyota end after that. They go in depth about the improvement of regen braking. They're getting another, it looks like 2% out of their new systems, which, you know, that adds up over time. Absolutely. 
whether it's in their hybrids or even in their battery electric vehicles. Don't wanna go into too much of this because it's pretty boring, but some of you guys feel free to pause here if you wanna look at electric brake modules. Uh, they also go into sustainability, which I'm not gonna to get too much into. Just looking at this graph here would take me a day to go over. So 2025 for Toyota is where we're gonna see a massive improvement in their electric vehicles, their efficiencies, 2027 in theory, maybe another large leap and power output as well as packaging. So I guess that's all we have at this point in time from Toyota, essentially through one of their biggest suppliers. And definitely stay tuned because when we hear from Toyota, uh, maybe in December, not, it could be January, maybe even later at this point, as Toyota is still trying to figure out how they're going to re-envision uh, their battery electric plan. So definitely stay tuned because once I get that information, I'll share it with you guys. And have a great holiday season if you're watching this during the holidays. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe for more industry auto news, especially coming out of Japan and Korea. Thank you guys for all of your views. Have a wonderful day. Take care of yourself. And peace out.